Welcome to Animal Control Issues. I'm your host, Emmanuel Maceo. We're here at Forever Plaza Animal Shelter in Fall River. A couple years ago, we did a show here, and since then, so much has changed, but the adoptions hasn't, and the need for animals to be adopted is still there. Let's all take a look and see what Forever Paws has to offer this year. Hi, I'm here with Gail Furtado, president of Forever Paws Animal Shelter. We do have a contract with Forever Paws. Uh, the city of New Bedford brings all our animals to Forever Paws, the cats, the dogs, the rabbits, the ferrets, you name them, um, we bring them up here. And um, it's a, a contract that we've had with uh, Forever Paws since 2003. Um, Gail, uh, since 2003, uh, since the city's been with you, we've done, uh, we've seen a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, we're inside a, the, uh, the newest. Uh, yep, great new playground for our animals here. This was donated. We had two donors that donated for us. This has been a dream for a long, long time, Manny, as you know. This, this is how you run Forever Paws on, on the donations. You are a 501c3. Yep, we are. We're a nonprofit organization, as you, as you pointed out, for people that don't know what 501c3 is. And we basically run on donations. We do have a staff of eight people. We have five full time people and three. And then I'll have someone else talk to you about our volunteer programs and so on. But basically, right now, it's all on donations. I have said right from the beginning this building here and this, all this area here has been built on nickels, dimes, and quarters and cans and bottles and we continue to run that way. We have lots of fundraisers going on all the time and that's a big, you know, part of our, um, our budget is about a third of our budget is fundraising. I think one of the things I'd like to point out, Manny, is that we are a volunteer board. We only, we have 12 members right now and I can tell you that we actually are a working board. I mean, when I tell you right from the beginning of Forever Pause, when some of us came down here and actually cleared the land, physically cleared the land, we did that. And we continue to do things like that. We've got, you know, Diane Cody here today who comes in and she takes care of our plants out there. You know, she waters the plants on a weekly basis because we can't expect the staff to do everything. And like you said, we'll go in the park area, the brick pathway in a few minutes and take a look at that. But what happens here is that we all have a job to do, and, I, and I'm very proud of the board of directors. They work extremely hard. We have, I would say, at least sometimes two fundraisers a month because we have to. And they're always out there. They're always plugging. And I really appreciate all the help that they do. And again, the staff, we've had a turnover of staff the last couple of years. And again, I'm very but, proud of but the But that happens. That happens. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's been studied, and they usually they last about three years. Uh, it is a very hard field to be in. You're at one point saving animals, at another point, you know, you're hoping these animals go home somewhere and, and, and find a, their forever home. All the animals you see here today and that you will see here um, are all up for adoption. And uh, Frosty's over here, and you know, he's uh, one of the dogs we brought up that was hit by a car, and he has uh, three legs. Hi, I'm here with Bev. Uh, she's also a board member for Forever Paws. And uh, Bev, um, this seemed to be your little um, project here, and, and what are we standing on right now? We're actually standing on our brick park. It's been uh, about seven years in the making. We sell all the brick. People can inscribe the bricks any way they want, in memory of, in honor of. Um, and the park is actually built so that we have added park benches. The park benches are also for sale. Uh, down here right now we have uh, five of these park benches are sold. There's one left. When the last one is sold, then I'll start adding down um, the rest of the way down here. The brick park was built so that we would have a place for people to donate money in honor of and memory of a person or a pet. Uh, and that way, there would always be some place they could come and see where that name is. And it means a lot to a lot of people to see a name of a pet. Uh, so, it's like a, so it's like a memorial a wall, bit. but it's a memorial walkway. It's more of a memorial walkway. More people do in memory of um, than anything else down here on this brick path. During the spring and the summer, we try to have a lot of flowers down here. It's serene. It's quiet. It's peaceful. We put it right next to the cat play yards because the cats don't bark. So we have a quieter area than if we did it on the other side where the dogs are. And it's very nice if you come down here in the summer, you have shade, you have sun, you can sit on the benches, you can read all the names on the benches, read all the names on the brick. And, and if anyone's interested in, uh, in getting a brick in, in memory of their pet or their loved one, um, 
How do they do that? Well, we have a, two simple ways. One is on the computer online. You could download an application. And how would they, what, what uh, website would they have to go on to? It would be foreverpause.com, and you'd click on the, um, the little brick picture that's on there right now. You'd click on the brick, and you would open up the page. The page would show you the bricks. Bev, talk to us about the Paw Society. Paw Society stands for Providing Animals with Security. It's a little something you could do when you will. Uh, you leave a little bit of money for us, and then what we will do is put a brick down with your uh, family member's name on it, uh, in memory of, and it stays in our little section of the park. So it's a, uh, a will. It's yes. It's a will, something you put on your will. Correct. Awesome. Great. Here we have uh, the uh, cat play yard. Yes. We have two cat play yards, actually. Both of them were built by Diamond Vocational Technical High School. Again, they volunteer their time? All volunteered. Uh, supplies were very minimum. We got a lot of it donated. Our shelter is based on the animal, not on the people. We don't have a lot of people rooms or offices. We have all animal rooms. Our office people work basically in the hallways. We do have a desk here and there for them to do the computer work. But almost everything is for the animals in this building. You know, we have people that are looking to adopt an animal and they're there with the staff. They're taking the dog out for a, a walk. They're playing around with the dog. They're actually out in one of our other play yards. We do have more play yards in the back of the building. There's a small one right now, which is great for people who do meet and greets. They come with their dog and they meet one of our dogs. Uh, here you have obviously space was, um, storage space was a problem. Diamond Vocational came here, we talked about it, what could we do with the space? We built cat litter sheds. So the four of them are for cat litter. And it's just basically, it's an easy little technique here. And yep, it's all cat, cat litter. litter. and sandbags. Are Oh, the sandbags are from the nice hurricane. The hurricane, yep. Yes. It's, you know, you must have a hurricane plan, and obviously yep. people don't understand that even an animal shelter must have a hurricane plan or a disaster plan uh, uh, in case something does happen, a um, flooding situation. You know, you don't want nothing to happen to these animals. So uh, having a disaster plan for the shelter and yourself is, very, is a good idea. Here, you know, you have a memory of um, these are someone else that donated um, areas of the shelter. When people give us a sizable donation, we ask them how would they like us to implement that donation. The woman who gave us that sign, she uh, donated a lot of money and she requested that a sign be erected in memory of her daughter. And that's how that sign got there. I'm here with one of the volunteers from Forever Paws Animal Shelter in Fall River. Pat, uh, what, what's important about volunteering and, and why, why here? Um, well, I retired and I felt that I should do something worthwhile with my time and I love animals. And I did volunteer at another shelter and also here. And now I'm just here because I feel that you need more help here. Um, I, I'm here like 12 hours a week, but other people, you know, if you have a half hour, an hour, any time that people can spare, they're really needed here. What do you, what do most volunteers do here? Um, well, I work with the cats, so I clean up. Um, sometimes I do dishes, sometimes I do laundry, sweep, wash floors. Um, even if people can just come in and socialize with the animals or walk the dogs, it's very important. They need a lot of attention. It, it, you, you, you hit a good point, socializing with animals. And that's what, why it's so important to come out, volunteer. Volunteers come out and give their time, because these animals will only get better with the social, socializing these animals with people. Um, any, anything else that you'd like to tell the people that how, how better to volunteer? Like I said, if people have time, if they think they only have an hour, an, an hour is good. An hour is good if they can spend some time with the cats uh, or, like I said, walk a dog. You get a lot back. You get a lot back. You feel good about it. I feel good when I leave here. And I feel like I've done a, a good service. How long have you been volunteering? Um, Altogether, I've been volunteering about two years. I've been here since May, and I'll be here now three days a week. It is a great feeling to volunteer. I myself volunteer a lot uh, across the city, in the state, actually. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer, please do so. Either if not here at Forever Pause, 
with someone in your local community. I'm here with another board member from Forever Paws Animal Shelter, Diane Cody, coordinator for community outreach. And Diane, uh, what kind of programs does Forever Paws have um, in the community? Okay, well first of all, we think it's really important to get out into the community so people get to know us. And by getting out into the community, we are certainly enhancing adoption. So when people see our animals, we're hoping that they totally fall in love and adopt the ones that we have on site or they come down to the shelter and they adopt some of the ones that we have in our building. So when you're saying on site, uh, you're saying Forever Paws Animal Shelter, uh, what kind of uh, outreach do you do? What, what, what organizations, and, and I know you have programs with our, uh, some uh, uh, nursing homes. Yes, um, we started getting involved in nursing homes and basically what we're doing is that we're involved in two different nursing homes, one in New Bedford and one in Dartmouth. And we have been going once a month and we've been doing pet therapy with the residents that live there. We bring one cat who is absolutely perfect for the job and we always bring a couple of kittens. And the joy in which the pet therapy gives these people that are residents at the nursing home is really beyond. And when the cat is being held by one of the residents, the cat really knows that this particular person loves animal. The connection between the pets and the love definitely comes out together. And it's also been studies that show that um, animals and seniors actually there's a, a bond there and that seniors uh, seem to live longer. We have a senior to senior program, a senior to senior adoption program currently and we have that program because of the coalition of Greater New Bedford funds this particular program and basically what happens is is that if anybody is 55 years of age or older and they adopt a cat or a dog that happens to be five years of age or older the adoption fee for this particular animal would only be five dollars and because of the coalition of Greater New Bedford and all the fundraising in which they do, they are the ones who pay the adoption fee to our shelter. It's a wonderful program that's out there and it's not just available through our shelter, it is also available through other shelters. If people want more information on the Senior for Senior program, um, where, how to contact or where to go, how could they get that information? Okay, all you'd have to do is you could call the shelter at 508-677-9154 or you could visit the website at www.foreverpause.com. And that uh, program basically saves uh, the lives of those older animals that also need a forever home. and. Um, any other community programs that you have, other outreach programs? Yes, yeah, so we have a regular scheduled adoption program. Um, the first Saturday of every month, we go to Animal Instincts, which is located on Plymouth Avenue in Far River, and we do an adoption day from 11 to 3 there. The second Saturday of every month, we go to Melissa's Pet Depot, which is located in Dartmouth. And for those of you who might not know where it is, it is in the Coles and the Inn and Hope Plaza. And we do the adoption there the second Saturday of every month, once again, 11 to 3. On the third Saturday of every month, we are at Petco in Dartmouth. Great. So it just makes things easier for people to go out and adopt an animal. Um, we'll be back after this message and we'll talk to Aaron Pacheco, the manager of the shelter, about how you can adopt an animal. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, and it's cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick or fly or cool or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do now and make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. You know, disasters can strike anytime, any place, anywhere. If you have pets, you need to protect them by having a disaster plan in place. You should know where you'll go with your pets if you have to evacuate and never, ever leave your pets behind. If it's not safe for you, it can't be safe for them. Always make sure your pets are wearing collars and up-to-date identification and have a disaster kit ready to go with all the supplies your pet will need if you have to evacuate. For more information about this, please contact my friends at the Humane Society of the United States. They'll help you save your pet.
How old is the cat that you're getting? Eight Between three, three to five. No, three or five. Awesome. Oh, cool. Take him to the vet. Today see. And yeah. Take him to tomorrow, right? It's it's important because a lot of times you have um, people always want the little kitten, no, the little small cat, and the whole thing is like the you know they forget these kittens become big cats, and then what do you do? But at least you know you know you see the cat. The cat already has its you know issues. If if you know you already know if the cat's gonna be nice or whatever, you don't have to. You, whatever you see now at three years old, that's, that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. Oh, and now, are you going to give us a copy of the rabies and everything? Yes. Okay, great, because we're taking it to the groomer right now, and we need a copy of that. Awesome. Oh, so that's, that's a little cat. Food. Okay. No. What kind of uh, cat food has he been eating here? Is it just yeah. by donations? Donations. So, What's dry usually? kibble. Dry um, kibble, because okay. I want to eventually take him off that, so it's not going to slow different, But I want to make sure he okay. eats. Okay. That's your receipts, okay. Have you researched about food and stuff? Is that why? Yeah, it's, it's going to try to go like organic. Organic? Okay. Like, we're going to try to go organic. Yeah. Awesome. But the thing about organic is maybe you feel no better. I guess I've been hearing about organic. Sometimes organic don't have all the vitamins, and you got to put like vitamin... It depends. Like a supplement. Um, where you are in New Bedford, um, stop in down, to, down earth. to earth. That's exactly. Yeah. That's uh, something next. Go see um, uh, Dolores. Yeah. She's awesome. And mm -hmm. she actually reads up everything that she has in that store. Oh, okay. She's read up about it. She wants to know what's in there, what good, uh, good and bad about what she carries. Okay. And that's why, I mean, she is awesome what goes on there at uh, Down yeah, to Earth that's the, Foods. Yes, that's what we're thinking. But I know with cats, you're going to eventually lean them off. You can't give them all the same. Cause yeah, that, and, and that's that's just, what it is. If, if you're feeding kibble, yeah. uh, um, and you you know, you just get a regular bag of, uh, if it's uh, Friskies or yeah, Chow Mix small, or whatever, small bag of and then you add your mix to that yeah. and slowly go like 75-25 uh, yeah, to 50-50 yeah. and then and slowly take away from the kibble and put more of yours. Just mm -hmm. so it won't be a, a, a dramatic, dramatic change, change yeah. on, on the bowel the and the digestive system. Yeah. So that's that's the actual. Situation. Is that all the information that you mm -hmm. have on him? Yeah. Since he came here, it's because what we've our given vet. Oh, okay. Because the so vet wanted all the information that was. He's been here since February, right? Yeah, the arrival date is right there. Oh, February. February. Right. Right in shelter. And he had been here prior to that, right? Because um, the other lady said that he he had been astray. That's the actual date that he came. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Then here's, here's the rabies. Three, four, eleven. It expires. Three. Oh, so he's he's fine. Yeah. He's fine. Hey, hey Blaine, come here, buddy. You want me to put him in the crate? I'll, I'll, put, him in. I'll put him. Hi, buddy. A little guy. There he is, huh? Hey, uh, you ready, ready to go home? Yep. Huh? shelter manager for Forever Paws Animal Shelter. And Erin, um, you know, all these animals that we see in this room and, and through the whole facilities, um, they're up for adoption. Yes, that's correct. Uh, how could someone adopt an animal? Um, people usually just come to the shelter. If they call, we encourage them to come to the shelter. And um, they can look around, see whether they're interested in cats or dogs. Um, we'll show them the appropriate animals that they're interested in. And uh, we like to have you interested in a particular pet um, before you proceed with paperwork. And you do need to be 21 and older to adopt an animal from our shelter. There is an application that you fill out and you go from there. We process the application and give you a call. Some of the questions on the application is like if you own the house, if you own any other animals. That's just to uh, better, uh, you know, for the person that's adopting it because you don't want to adopt an animal and only know that the owner of the uh, your landlord doesn't want your, you to have any animals. Right. 
ideally we want the best home for the animals and we want the owner of the home to be aware that there are animals in the home. Um, what are the hours of operation here? We're here every single day except for Wednesday from 11 to 4. Some of the other questions on the application, uh, for instance, are um, if you're interested in adopting a cat, we would ask if the cat would be indoor or outdoor. Um, you know, we're just looking out for the best interest of the animal. They've, they've been through enough being at the shelter in their background history of how they got here that we really do want to ensure that they go into the best home. And as you look around, all the cats are in um, somewhat like a family rooms versus cages. Um, why is that? Why is that so important for Forever Paws to have uh, open areas for these cats? Sure, we have free roaming rooms where they can socialize with each other. Uh, they're much happier and healthier. Uh, we do hold them for a period of time before they're allowed to come into a free roaming room. And also we have outdoor cages that they can go inside and outside. And they have access to go in and out. Yes, which is a mm -hmm. huge thing for them. It, when um, someone is interested in adopting a cat, they can come right into in the room here and see which cat. For instance, this little buddy here is just uh, right. wanting to go home, and, and this is something that uh, he obviously knows how to get a, a, a hold of you and how to uh, get your attention. He's a little attention getter. but um, So that would be something that these, this, this puts that... Um, closeness between the person and the owner. Right. Uh, where it wouldn't be that they're going to a, an adoption room, they can actually walk into a room and all the cats approach them and, you know, show how friendly they are. And I think each animal picks their new owner. And with the dogs, um, do you, you have areas that people could also take the dog out? We've seen an adoption earlier uh, of someone that was interested in adoption take one of the dogs out in the back uh, pen and uh, actually and intervene and play with the dog. Is that something that you see a lot? We do. We usually um, allow people to bring the dogs outside, walk them a little bit out there, you know, get the feel for their new pet. When you adopt an animal, what are you getting in return besides uh, a, a healthy, beautiful animal? Um, with the dogs, we do heartworm tests. They're all up to date with their vaccinations, and we do spay and neuter. With the cats, we feline leukemia test, all their vaccines up to date, and also spay and neuter. If you want to adopt a cat or a dog from Forever Paws, you also have bunnies here too. If you want to adopt an animal, how do you go about adopting an animal? Um, you can call us. You can look on our website. Um, our website actually has a link to Pet Finder and to Adopt a Pet, where you could get information about each of the animals, see their picture. And if you've lost your pet, you could also go on a website and uh, see if your pet is here. Right. And I also encourage people to go on to Craigslist and just put pictures of their lost pet there. Uh, a lot of times I do look on Craigslist and see pictures and try to contact the people if I believe that that's their lost pet. So if you've lost your pet in New Bedford, um, call the Forever Paws Animal Shelter. Call your local animal control. a little bit about uh, this dog here when it came in it weighed 30 something pounds she weighed 33 pounds and at last weigh in uh, she was about 45 and that's in what a week's and that's time? within a week to a week and a half that she's gained that weight and these animals need to be fed in slow uh, uh, amounts of time uh, right. not something that you just give them a big bowl of food right and that again comes to do with uh, the quality and, and the uh, the knowledge of the staff here at Forever Paws. And you also do a, uh, a clinic. Tell us a little about the clinic that you run. We have a vaccine clinic that's the first Thursday of each month and people are allowed to bring their animals here, just fill out some paperwork and receive vaccinations for the animals for $10 a piece. So for $10 you can get your animals vaccinated for uh, what type of vaccinations are we talking about? Uh, we do rabies, distemper, and uh, we also have kennel cough vaccine. And for obviously more information, you can either contact Forever Paws through the website or the, by calling Forever Paws.
Every day, more and more animals are being brought in by animal control, either due to abandonment or people no longer can keep their animals. Please do your part and adopt your animal from Forever Paws Animal Shelter. GED diploma, the barriers in your life fall. Take the first step and get free GED information in your area at 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or yourged.org. Earn your GED diploma and begin your brighter future. So, you're looking for help with your mortgage. Worried about foreclosure? Mm. Messy stuff. We're a mortgage rescue company. We can help you keep your house. All we ask for in return is that you submit to our plans for galactic domination. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. Sign. Yeah, this is not... Well, we Have you met my henchman, Radu? Nice to meet you. Radu. We're just gonna... We'll see you later. If you're facing foreclosure, make sure you're talking to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. See where the good goes at goodgoes.org.